hello and welcome back to Constellation Station. I'm Nicole from the Cincinnati Observatory and I'm back with a new constellation for you today. So here at Constellation Station we like to do three things. We like to learn a little bit about constellations, learn where to find them out in the night sky, and then figure out how we can make them in our own home. So I did something extra special today. I've been thinking about while we're doing this Constellation Station you know, ways that we can be creative about the ways that we're making our constellations. So today I decided to make origami stars. So I have three origami stars up here, these two blue ones and this white one. And uh, I started with this uh, square piece of paper. So this I used blue for my blue stars. You could use really any paper you want. Um, and from here, I folded all of the stars by following special instructions. So. If you want some uh, the instructions on how to make uh, our special origami stars, you can always um, send us a message. Um, we'll probably post it somewhere on our website as well for you guys to see um, how to make your own origami stars at home if you want to make those while you're making your own constellations. So I made my special origami stars today, and lucky for me, I only need three stars today, three stars to make our constellation. And actually, I want to introduce you guys to a new word today. So we call this program Constellation Station, and we talk about connecting the dots in the night sky. But constellations aren't the only way that you can connect dots. Sometimes we also call these connect the dot pictures asterisms. And asterisms are basically informal constellations. So it's something more like a slang constellation instead of a, a, a constellation you would maybe find in the dictionary. So asterisms are a lot more fun because we can just look up in the night sky and connect the dots that we see without making sure that, hmm, that's supposed to look like Orion or that's supposed to look like Taurus the Bull. We can make up our own constellations and anytime someone does that, we call them asterisms. And in fact, we've already talked about some asterisms on Constellation Station. I know all of you guys remember us talking about the Big and Little Dippers. Those are asterisms. They aren't even official constellations. They are part of official constellations, but them in themselves are not constellations. They're just asterisms. We see the Big and Little Dipper up in the night sky, and we decided, hey, that kind of looks like a picture. And so scientists made have an official constellation using those and we make something that we call an asterism and my asterism today is called the summer triangle we just celebrated the summer solstice and the summer solstice is really special in astronomy because it's all about where the earth and the sun are so we know that there's equal points of night and day when we have uh, the fall and the the spring we know that uh, days are really short when we get into the winter, but during the summer, during the summer solstice, we celebrate the longest day of the year, the longest day. And so because of that, we, we have um, some special celebrations, and this includes us bringing in the summer triangle into our discussions in the night sky. The summer triangle really kicks off the summer for us. So if you haven't been feeling like it's very summery, now's the time to start. We can talk about the summer triangle. So I'm using my three origami stars to make our summer triangle today, and the dots are gonna be really easy to connect. So I want you guys to think about uh, how I'm connecting these dots today with an asterism opposed to a constellation. So normally, I use pretty much all the stars in the center of my constellation station. Usually I'm using really all of them, but today I'm gonna skip some of the stars and just focus on the biggest ones that I see. So we're gonna start with our two blue big stars. Our first star of the summer triangle is Vega. Vega is looks very big and bright out in the night sky. It's one of the brightest stars that we can see. And you can actually see the blue color of Vega really, really well. And Vega we connect to Dunab. Dunab is our other really big blue star that we see in the night sky this time of the year. And you can see we bypass these two little red stars and this little white star. It's not that they aren't up in the night sky, and those stars probably are part of their own constellations. Even Vega and Denab are a part of their own constellations. But for the Summer Triangle, we just find the biggest and the brightest stars that we 
you see during the summer and that they make a triangle and we make a triangle out of them. So we're gonna keep connecting our dots here, going from Deneb to our last star of the summer triangle. Out here we have Altair. Altair is a white, sometimes bluish star, but it looks mostly white up in the night sky. It's our last really big star that we see during the summer that makes up this triangle. And then we have to finish by connecting Altair back up to Vega. So again, see how I'm bypassing all of these other stars that we could make a part of a certain constellation, but for asterisms, we're really looking for the biggest and the brightest stars. Like in the Big Dipper, it's so easy to see the Big Dipper, but if you were to, to try to picture all of the stars in Ursa Major, which is the constellation that the asterism of the Big Dipper is in, then that would take a lot more stars. So we're just picturing the big stars here that can help us make our summer triangle. There's also a winter triangle. There's other shapes that we make with asterisms as well. So our summer triangle here, you can find our summer triangle in the east and north eastern sky. Now what's really cool about the summer triangle is I think it's really easy to find. It takes up so much space of in the eastern and northeastern sky that really it's hard to miss, especially if you're just looking for three really bright stars. For some of our constellations and the asterisms that we've talked about, it's actually kind of hard to find some of the stars in them. You might be able to find a couple. We especially talked about this with the Little Dipper. It's really hard to find the Little Dipper. You need the Big Dipper to help find the Little Dipper. But no matter where you live, if you live in the city, if you live in the middle of the country, wherever you live, you should still be able to see the stars of the Summer Triangle, even if you have a lot of light pollution, because these stars look so big and so bright here on Earth. So if you look up in the east northeast sky, so we're going from the um, east to the northeast over here, you'll be able to find Vega, Denab, and Altair to make our summer triangle. So I hope you are, are able to find a lot of our constellations that we're talking about and that you're even making some asterisms of your own. So remember, if you want to make your own constellations, your own asterisms, you can send us pictures of your own constellation station, the different constellations or asterisms that you make. And I encourage all of you to look online to figure out maybe the constellation that you make at home. Can you figure out, is it a constellation or is it an asterism? There's a lot of constellations, so it could possibly be a constellation, but maybe you're the first person to ever connect the dots of any particular stars, and that would make it an asterism. So thank you for watching today. As always, uh, share your pictures with us of your constellations, and I will see you guys next week here on Constellation Station. Mm -hmm.